NUM General Secretary Arthur Scargill has launched a new attack against Sellafield and the nuclear industry. Speaking at the TUC conference in Blackpool, he said his members would support a strike by engineers and scientists there next week. But his comments against the industry have been slammed by Copeland's Labour MP, Dr Jack Cunningham. Shilling Wingfield reports. To move 87. Mr Scargill has been opposed to nuclear power for the past 35 years and made his views plain to the TUC conference in Blackpool. We've been told that nuclear power is safe. Safe? Have we forgotten what happened in 1957 at Windscale? Windscale, which changed its name to Sellafield to become more acceptable. Incidentally, I'm told in today's newspapers they're going to have a strike there next week. If it's right, we'll send thousands of flying pickets to close it down permanently with you. Copeland MP Dr Jack Cunningham said Mr Scargill's views were irrelevant to the future of nuclear power and that Britain needed both coal and nuclear power to ensure its energy supply. Unions at Sellafield say they won't respond to the speech until they hear from members at Blackpool. A BNFL spokesman said that the government is committed to nuclear power and that the Labour Party is totally committed to Sellafield. Shirley Wingfield there. Meanwhile, 150 engineers, scientists and reactor managers at Chapel Cross nuclear plant near Annan are also likely to join the 24-hour strike next Wednesday. They've rejected a 7.75% offer and backed the call for industrial action. About 80 jobs will go today at three South West Scotland knitwear plants operated by Robertsons of Dumfries. One unit at Kirkubri will close with the loss of 13 jobs. 33 will go at Castle Douglas and a further 37 at the headquarters in Dumfries where 170 are employed. The recession in the knitwear industry has been blamed. Other firms have been hit and at McGeorge's factory in Dumfries short-time working has been introduced in one department and at another plant in Annan. Three men have appeared before Carlisle magistrates charged with stealing almost £13,000 worth of jewellery and video cameras from two houses in Brampton and Carlisle. They were also charged with possessing a shotgun and shortening its barrel. 22-year-old Bernard Baker, Alan Brett, who's 23, and 25-year-old Joseph McGrath, all from Liverpool, were remanded in custody for a week. An Isle of Man inquest heard last night how a motorcyclist died soon after arriving on the island to watch this week's Manx Grand Prix races. 32-year-old John Glanville from Warwickshire was riding his bike and collided with a, a skip wagon on the main Douglas de Pere Road near Braddon Bridge. A verdict of accidental death was recorded. Controversial plans for a caravan development at Wooler in North Northumberland have been turned down. The Bridge End Caravan Company wanted to put 155 caravans and land at Wooler Hoch, but plans, planners and Berwick said there was not enough screening of the site. Councillors in Berwickshire are considering the idea of introducing a dog registration and warden scheme. It follows an increasing number of complaints about dogs fouling footpaths and public places. A man has had to abandon his attempt to swim non-stop from Port Patrick in southwest Scotland to Ireland and back after being stung by jellyfish. Kevin Murphy, a radio reporter from London, began the epic attempt early yesterday. He's been detained overnight in hospital and is expected to be released sometime this morning. Finally, look at the border weather. It'll be cloudy with rain at first, but mainly dry and bright later. Winds will be light to moderate, north to northeast, and maximum temperatures 17 degrees Celsius, that's 63 Fahrenheit. That's it. Good morning.